This video is sponsored by Kamikoto. Most movies have three-day opening weekends, that is Friday through Sunday with Thursday previews tacked onto Friday's numbers. But due to their time of release, if they coincide with certain holidays, some movies may get five-day opening weekends. Usually, movies with five-day opening weekends are expected to perform even better than your average movie, which only has a three-day opening weekend. So when a movie with a five-day opening weekend bombs, that failure is all the more visible and all the more potent. Such is the case with the latest release from Disney and Pixar, Strange World. Over the course of its five-day opening weekend, it could not even muster 20 million, which makes it an even bigger bomb than Pixar's previous disaster, Lightyear. Not only that, because of the money that went into making it, Strange World will go onto the list of biggest box office bombs of all time. How could this happen? In this editorial, this very early post-mortem, if you will, we will explore just that. As we go through why the movie failed this badly, how Pixar should breathe a sigh of relief that Bob Chapek is no longer there to fire them all. And finally, where this leaves Disney's new boss, who is the same as Disney's old boss, Bob Iger. According to woke Hollywood ideology, there is no reason why Strange World should have failed. Greenlit by Bob Iger, not Chapek, the movie was a result of Disney's not-so-secret agenda. In that it was so diverse, so safe, and so inclusive that everyone, and Disney means everyone, should feel represented in it and take their kids to go see it. It had an openly gay lead, an interracial couple, and just to be extra inclusive, even a disabled dog. <laughs> You serious? Yes, I am serious. And on top of that, it even had an old, straight, white man that will soon die off and take his problematic ways with him. So, what was not to like? How could this fail, Disney wonders? Of course, out here in the real world, no one wonders, because that's why it failed. When you make something for everyone, then in reality, you make it for no one. Case in point, this movie was so woke that it practically reads like a parody. When audiences tuned out of Lightyear because it sidelined Buzz Lightyear in favor of an anti-father storyline where the lesbian kiss was but one visual expression, there was no way they were coming back for the even more on-the-nose strange world. You can cite more reasons, and I guarantee you that the establishment media complex will come up with no end of the rationalizations for why the movie failed, but that's all they'll be rationalizations aimed at covering up the single fact that audiences are increasingly rejecting Hollywood's wokeness. And the audience trust in the Disney brand is no stiving because they are the leading proponents of it. After this failure, most of Pixar's staff would have been fired by the end of next week, if Bob Chapek had still been there. We have previously covered Disney's disastrous quarterly earnings, which in no small part are due to audiences rejecting Disney's content. These numbers gave Bob Chapek the cover he needed to do what must be done at Disney, namely mass firings. And to briefly repeat that, no, due to the composition of Disney's boards and shareholders, Bob Chapek simply did not have the institutional power to fire anyone at will. He had to go through a rigorous process for everyone he fired, arguing that failing to fire them would have been a repudiation of Disney's fiduciary duties to those of Disney's shareholders who are actually in it for the dividends, and not the pushing of ESG and DEI. With the quarterly numbers behind him, and with this opening weekend, JPEG would have had the justification to cut staff mercilessly at Pixar, had he not been fired first. The detailed reasons why he was fired have not been confirmed, but we do have some fairly convincing rumors. In the end, though, Chapek did not get to make those much-needed cuts, so that is now Bob Iger's call. What might he do? Let's speculate on that, but before we do, and on the topic of cutting, we have a message from this video sponsored. Kamikoto makes Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan. 
Kamikoto builds on the legacy of over 800 years of Japanese metallurgy expertise in creating the steel to make the knives, which in turn have been meticulously handcrafted using traditional techniques that date back to Japan's Edo period. Having tried them, I can confirm they are perfect for the purpose they have been designed for, whether it be cutting fruits and vegetables, filleting fine Norwegian salmon, or cutting the toughest of meats. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. Showcasing the traditional Japanese legacy, each knife also comes in a sturdy and highly decorative heavy-duty ash wood box, which not only ensures that the knives are stored safely, but that they make for some great gifts. What is more, Kamikoto still has a late Black Friday sale going on right now, but since they're sponsoring this video, we of course have an even better deal for you. If you visit our landing page, kamikoto.com slash midnight, which you'll also find in the description, and then use our code MIDNIGHT when ordering, you'll get an additional $50 off any purchase, including on top of any other special offer. So head on over to kamikoto.com slash midnight, type in our code MIDNIGHT upon checkout, and order your Japanese steel kitchen knives today. With that, let's get back to what Bob Iger might do. Bob Chapek was only fully in charge of Disney between January the 1st of this year and up to one week ago. For the duration of his reign prior to that, Bob Iger was always there, exerting his influence, whether by forcing his way back into the CEO role or in his capacity of being the previous chairman of the board. If someone in the media tries blaming Strange World's failure on Chapek, keep in mind that Chapek had nothing to do with it, both this and every other Disney movie that failed this year were greenlit by Bob Iger. These are his failures. No movie greenlit by Bob Chapek has been released yet, but if you wonder which they are, I can tell you. It's the upcoming massive Marvel movies that will feature familiar faces like Hugh Jackman in key roles, and many many more intended at winning audiences back after the disastrous Phase 4. All of Disney's recent failures are in reality Bob Iger's fault. It's his out-of-date policies that have come home to roost. So, what will he do about it now? Will he proceed with the firings that Bob Chapek initiated? For the good of the company, he should, because as it stands, the toxic creatives and department heads that Iger installed are in the process of ruining Disney. But will Iger have the fortitude to go back on his previous practices to save the company? Or is there merit to the rumors that he will sell the whole shebang to Apple if heads doesn't roll at Pixar? And after this opening weekend, they by rights should. I would say that lends more weight to the latter scenario. Stay tuned, because we will follow what happens. What do you make of Strange World's failure? Let me know in the comments, and before you go, remember to head on over to kamikoto.com slash midnight, type in our code MIDNIGHT upon checkout, and order your authentic Japanese steel kitchen knives now.